The unique and wonderful thing about drawing is its spontaneity. When you look at a drawing, you're transported to the moment of creation. You're there looking over the artist's shoulder at the moment that they were thinking and making the work. The Barnett Collection is the distilled essence of the art of drawing in Europe over the last 500 years. Howard and Soretta Barnett collected in a very unusual and incredibly careful way. They were collecting not just drawings but across several other categories including African and Oceanic art and some contemporary paintings. In every case they bought only the very best objects of the type. Over about 40 years they bought a total of 30 drawings. The earliest drawing in the collection is the extraordinary landscape, the Viesole, just outside Florence, by Fra Bartolomeo, made in around 1500. He was the first Italian Renaissance artist who regularly made pure landscape drawings. Fra Bartolomeo has drawn only in pen, and yet he's managed to capture light in the most remarkable way. We have the beautifully detailed rendition of the village on the top of the hill. You can see small figures climbing up the road to the top, just as Fra Bartolomeo himself would have done. He's left us with the most important group of landscape drawings by any Italian Renaissance artist. They are extremely rare on the market. The Sheet of Studies by Parmigianino is an astonishingly animated and energetic drawing. It was made around 1524, in the very height of the Italian Renaissance. He's used the entire sheet in all sorts of different ways. We have first a study of a group of figures seated, probably meant as shepherds. Then he's turned the sheet 90 degrees and we've got two more figures. On top of that we've got a section of musical notation and some inscriptions. Then he's turned the sheet over and made yet more studies. It's a passionate drawing, it's an inventive drawing and it's also a very beautiful work. Claude Laurent made a large number of extraordinarily atmospheric drawings of the countryside and the ancient ruins all around Rome. This drawing shows part of the ruins of an ancient Roman aqueduct. By this time it had decayed into a picturesque ruin, but Claude gives it an extraordinary nobility and grandeur. And his scenes are always bathed with this very characteristic Italian light, which was something that artists for centuries afterwards tried and usually failed to imitate. And these works really defined our view of Italy for the next three centuries. Goya was always a visionary artist. His images of destruction and the horrors of war are famous. But he was also an incredibly introspective artist and the most brilliant observer of humanity Late on in life, he began to make a series of small format drawings for what are known as his private albums, where he explored humanity in all its weaknesses and idiosyncrasies. This drawing of an old woman who's tried to fill her basket of eggs too full and is losing them is a classic example. He creates an intense and powerful image of this woman's desperation and sadness. Goya could capture these sorts of hardships in a way that hardly any other artist has ever managed. In the early 1830s, Samuel Palmer went to live in a Kent village called Shoreham. Palmer's drawings of his Shoreham period are the most visionary that he ever produced. What seems at first to be a very naturalistic, almost pastoral image of the English countryside is, when you delve deeper into it, a passionate, powerful and in some ways almost surreal work where the trees are more knotted and more convoluted. The landscape overwhelms the figures and there is a sense of enormous power of nature. The latest in date of all the drawings in the Barnett collection is the remarkable portrait of Balthus drawn by Lucian Freud in 1989. Balthus was famously reclusive and did not like having portraits made of him. In fact, only two portraits of Balthus are known. One was drawn by his own mother, and the other is this drawing by Lucian Freud. Freud captures all the introspective quality of Balthus's face. He captures the essence of his sitter and sees right to the heart of the man. Even though the 28 drawings in the Barnett collection were made hundreds of years apart, there are real connections. The fundamental that underlies most of the works in the Barnett collection is the observation of nature or of humanity. These drawings all somehow speak the same language. <laughs>